Yo, what is going on guys? It's JD Demico here, and today we're back with part two of Cinderella Phenomenon. Last time we left off, we uh, discovered that we are in fact a troubled princess whose mother has unfortunately passed away and whose father seemingly does not love her and is remarried, giving her two step-siblings now. She's not exactly looked well upon in terms of... Uh, the public appearance department, but she has just been cursed with the Cinderella fairy tale. So we're gonna have to see what exactly that entails, and we're gonna see what that entails right now. Hey! Wake up, girl! Huh? Where am I? Ow, my head! You have some nerve sleeping in front of my shop. Leave before a customer sees you. I was in my room. How am I here? Did you not hear what I said, you filthy child? You filthy? You would speak to your crown princess in such a manner? If you're the crown princess, then I'm the queen. You must have been knocked on the head quite hard after such grand illusions. I am not delusional. I am Yumiko Riella Britain, blood daughter of, Gen of King Gennaro Britain III and the crown princess of Angio. Right. The king never had a daughter without witch. Is she referring to mother? Witch? Don't pretend to be stupid, girl. I can only stare at her puzzled. Our good king only has stepchildren, Princess Hamelaine and Prince Rod. And you are most definitely neither of them. What? Now get gone before you go spouting your crazy gibberish at my customers and scare them away. With a huff, she leaves me with my own rapidly turning thoughts. I quickly realize that I am wearing tattered clothes, and that I do not even have shoes on. No, no, no. This cannot be happening. Something shines against my chest and I reach up to grab it. This is... It all floods back. Delora being a witch, Cinderella's glass slipper. This is not a dream. Delora gave me the fairy tale curse. My hands begin to tremble. I must... Return to the palace to speak with the king. Let me in. Sorry, girl. Sorry, girl, but this place is off limits to un uninvited guests. You do not understand. I am the Crown Princess Yumiko Real of Britain. I must speak with my father. As loath as I am to call him that, I have to. No one will believe me if I am address addressing him by title. You best leave now. You could best leave now, nice and quiet, before we have to force you. If you would only... Make way for the king! The gates swing open and three horses trot out. Soldiers ride two of the horses while the last horse has a different familiar rider. Father! I immediately move to block the path of his horse. The soldiers move to hold me back. Your Majesty! What is this? Your Majesty, this girl has claimed to be your daughter. Daughter? Both of my stepchildren are in the palace right now. What? Even father is a part of this? Father, you must help me. A witch has cursed me. For once in your life, just help me. Please. You must believe me. Tell me, where is your family, child? Why are you all alone? He looks at me with pity in his eyes. He is looking at me more kindly as a peasant than he ever did when I was the crown princess and his daughter. I recoil. You must be hungry. Take this. This should feed you and your family for a day or two. The kingdom offers work opportunities to those who need them. Please let your parents know. I do not want your pity. Father! Please escort this girl back to her home. Make sure she gets there safely. At once, your majesty. As I watch my father and his two guards ride away on their horses, leaving me to stand in the dust, he left me alone. Again. Where is your home, girl? There is nowhere left for me to go. Father has forgotten me. Leave me. Now look here, our orders were to leave me alone. Suit yourself. Can't say we didn't try. Don't cause any more scenes, little girl. 
I watch with bleary eyes as the soldiers return to the palace. How can this be happening? I stare at the small pouch in my hands. I do not know what hurts more. The fact that I have just been unceremoniously pervaded away from my home like I am nothing more than a piece of garbage. Or the fact that my own father does not recognize me. Oh, look at that girl's hit his dress. How difficult it is to be poor. I clutch the pouch closer to my chest as I run to an empty alley. I huddle in the corner, trying to become as small as possible. I squeeze my eyes shut, hoping that when I next open them, everything will be back to normal. A dream. No, ma no matter what happens, you must not leave the palace. Why? The world is cruel. People will only ever hurt you. But they are always so nice to me. That is only because you are the crown princess. They will only ever think of what they can take from you. I am trying to protect you, my love. That is why you must never leave the palace. Never leave mother. I am the only one who will ever love you so much. Do you understand? I understand. Chapter 1, The Marchin. When I open my eyes, I am still on the streets. I must have fallen asleep. But the nightmare continues. I am cold in my rags. I hold myself for warmth, wielding some of the cold away, but fail. My feet are numb and in pain, caked in the dirt that I have gathered from walking barefoot around town. Well, well there's a frightful sight. Becca, Becca probably thought she could try her luck with the nobility that live around here. Ah, just look how ragged she looks. What are you looking at? And the two women that lack the basic manners of a noble upbringing. Silence, girl! Do you know who you're talking to? No, and I don't care. What nerve! Let's just go. There's no reason to stoop to a commoner's level. I will remember you. And once I break this curse, I will make you regret your words. I become acutely aware of the fact that I have not eaten anything for almost a day. I have been sitting here, thinking on the new mess that is my life. Mess that is my life. But moping around will not break my curse. Crying will not help either. I should find that witch first, but how? I have no idea where she is. Delora. I swear I will regret making you I will make you regret doing this to me. When I find you, I I would find food first. Is this all the king thinks I'm worth? Leave, girl. A dirty peasant like you has no place in this restaurant. But why? I can pay. Find another place. You're scaring away my customers. Am I not a customer? Shoot, there's nothing for you here. He just swatted me away like a fly. The nerve. Sensing that, is, that this is getting me nowhere, I ball my hands into fists and walk away. I get the same treatment at the next three restaurants I try. I'm treated as nothing less than dirt. Like my money has no real value. I am the crown princess. They have no right to turn me away like this. I have been eating stale bread. Anything to keep the hung at bay. The bread barely helps. Out of the corner of my eye I notice a small bakery. There are croissants on display that make my mouth water. Slowly I begin to make my way over there. Uh, ow! My feet ache with every step. They look and feel even worse than before. If only I had enough coins for a pair of shoes. But food is more important. If the rags I, that I am wearing and the pouch of money are all I have, then I need to prioritize. And I will die before I bake. Two croissants. You need to pay, girl. There, is, there are no free hands out here. I take a coin from my pouch and hand it to her. This should be more than enough. The shop owner stares at the coin before reluctantly taking it. She hands me two croissants and a paper bag. I will not ask where you got those coins. Are you implying that I stole them? How else would a beggar like you get that amount of coin? Now be off with you, child. I won't have you scaring away any other customers. Without another word, I turn and start to walk away from the woman. So this is the goodness of the people of Angio. I take a bite out of one of the croissants, cringing a little at the dryness. 
Hey, go! What now? We saw you at that shop. Wanna share? Wanna share how you got your coins there? Excuse me. Look at her, brushing herself like she's royalty or something. Let me go. You ain't no better than us. Now, be a good girl and hand over the pouch. The man on my left grabs at my pouch and attempts to yank it away from me. I will not let these brutes take anything from me. I elbow the man in the stomach, then aim a kick at the other man's shin. I have an opening, and I take it. What? I pull myself free and begin to run as fast as I can. Aye! Where do I go? I'm not familiar with the streets at all. It's highly likely that I'm just going to hit a dead end. Oh, shit! Ah! Uh... Uh, well, I don't know where I am. I'm just, I'm just running. All right. You know what they say? Whenever you're in a maze, stick to the left. I cannot let the pain in my feet or my exhaustion stop me. If I stop now, they will definitely catch me. And taking my coins might not be the worst thing they can do. A dead end. No, it have to run now, girl. What do I do? Oh. Who are you, gentlemen? This is definitely not this is definitely not how you treat a lady. Huh? Who's there? A shadow looms above us. Before I can blink, a person has jumped down in front of me. His body acts as a barrier between the two men and me. <gasps> Who are you? Oh, me? Just a passing gentleman concerned about a damsel in distress. He turns to the men, his expression calm, his eyes flashing dangerously. Now, shall I teach you gentlemen a lesson? He's got a soul. What? Come back here, you cow. The two of us can take her. I think your friend has the right idea. I'm not the type to show mercy. This is way too much trouble for a little gold. Are you all right, my lady? You found her. The boy from yesterday. A little slow, aren't you, kid? Don't call me that. These two know each other. I don't even know what's going on anymore. I feel ill. My head is pounding and my feet feel simultaneously like they're frozen and on fire. My stomach rumbles, the hunger coming back with vengeance. My body feels light. Princess! Princess! Lady Parfait will be will be able to help her. You're right. We need to move now before anyone else sees us. Yeah. You have made the right choice. Yeah! Let's go! The crystal on the upper, upper right corner indicates that you've made the right choice for a particular love interest. Each color corresponds to a certain love interest. They also appear belatedly after you make a choice. So keep your eyes and ears open. All right, so I got the red guy, which I'm assuming is this boy right here. Hang in there, princess. Everything is fading. A dream. What is that in your hands, Yumiko? I... It was her. I just wanted to help her, but... But it died. It's all my fault. It's not your fault, my love. It died because it was weak. But... This is the world, Yumiko. Only the strong survive. The weak get cast aside to die. You are not weak. You are strong, my crown princess. And you do not cry. Now, wipe your tears. I do not want to see you cry again. Do you understand? Y y yes Now, get rid of that thing and wash your hands. Did you not hear me, child? Y yes mother. Seems like her mother was a bit of a... Evil bitch, huh? Oh, you're awake. Where am I? Ha, well, um... This isn't my room. My hand flies to my chest, but the little grass slipper hangs from my neck. Still here. Are you okay, miss? This girl is the maid that tore Dolores' dress. 
than when I fired for her clumsiness. Miss, to think that I would meet her again here, like this. Um, leave me alone. Oh, right, of course. Um, here's some salve I made for you. It'll help with the pain. Now what? Oh, shit. Haven't thought at all yet. Haven't thought at all, have you, Ice Princess? You! Suddenly, there she is. Dolores stands before me with a snide smile, looking happy with herself. She is the cause of everything I have been through. All the pain, heartache, and hunger. It is her fault. I try to stand, thinking to give the witch a piece of my mind, but as soon as my feet touch the floor, pain shoots up my legs. I end up falling back to the bed. Ow! You should be more careful to the girl you just scared away. She's been taking care of you for the past two days. Two days? I've been passed out for two days. I'm suddenly vibrating with anger. Remove the curse. Now. Ha! <laughs> do you think you can just command me to remove the curse in your best princess voice? What do you want? Gold? What I want is more. Is worth more than gold. It's worth more than all the gold you could summon an Angel princess. Besides, haven't you read your fairy tales? The caster cannot take a curse back. You need to focus on breaking the curse yourself if you want your life back. Mother burned the books that before I could read. M Mother burned the books before I could read more than two one or two of them. I do not think either involved curses. Just genies and trading away your voice for legs. <laughs> ah, it's good that you are awake, princess. Parfait, should you really be up and about? Don't fuss, I'm feeling much better. Are you a witch as well? Oh no, my name is Parfait and I am a fairy. A witch and a fairy, in one room, being friendly with one another. Impossible. Oh, look at her face. You weren't expecting that at all, were you, princess? What is going on? I'm sure you have many, qu I'm sure you have many questions, princess. How do you know that I'm the princess? Don't be silly. She's a fairy. Of course she knows. I promise we'll do our best to answer your questions. I don't even know where to start. What would you like to know? Why was I cursed? Seriously? You're going to... You really are going to ask that? I wouldn't have asked if I knew the answer. You have such a temper on you. Very well. This one's got a simple answer. It's because you're a cold-hearted, cruel, wicked princess who deserves to be punished. Delora, a curse is the only way to force you to change your horrid ways. Delora, you could, you could have put that more nicely. I'm pretty sure I was already being nice. Change. Why do I need to change? Are you completely unaware of how heartless you are to other people? The coldness you showed to your stepfamily and your father. The way you, the way you treat Princess Emmeline. Why would they need to be treated any differently? You need to prove that you have some goodness in you, princess. Some smidge of kindness. Why? People only show you kindness when they want something from you. The instant they get what they want, they just throw you away. What else would you like to know? How do I break the curse? The necklace you've got is one of Cinderella's glass slippers. To break the curse, you must get the second slipper. Complete the pair. And how do I do that? By doing three good deeds. What? It's a very easy thing to do. At least for someone who knows how to be good. Three good deeds? What does that even mean? I wouldn't even know where to start. Take heart, princess. <clears throat> Goodness is innate in everyone. Are you sure that's the case with this one? Delora, you are not helping. I'm a witch, and I think I have more goodness in my big tail than she has in her entire body. Now you're just being mean. For every good deed you accomplish, you will get a piece of the glass slipper. When you've gotten all three, you'll complete the pair, and the curse will break. Simple. I suggest you start by polishing that attitude of yours. What else would you like to know? Uh, what happens if I don't break it? I think you know the answer to that one already, princess. Uh, why are you working together? To answer that, we'll have to give you a bit of a history lesson. Oh, I've got this. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, there were two crystals. 
Dramatics, as dramatics aside, there is one crystal in the kingdom called the Crystallum Lucis. Lucas. It is powered by happiness and love. The other is the Crystallum Tenebrarum, powered by fear and anger. The strongest of the witches, of the witches is the Tenebrarum Bera. The strongest of the fairies is the Lucas Bera. Parfait is the Lucas Bera. I take it parfait. I take it parfait. Yeah, parfait's fair and sickly appearance. Oh, I take in. She's the strongest fairy. The Great War greatly damaged me. My powers are a fraction of what they used to be. And with no child, I have no successor to my burden. What does the better do? The batters regulate the energy of the crystals and keep the balance between darkness and light. For centuries, the fairies and witches lived in harmony with the humans of the kingdom. Until a certain human decided to be a pest. Who was he? I knew him as Hans Gabriel Grimm. He wrote the fairy tales. <laughs> the, the brothers Grimm. That's good. And he started the feud between the witches and the fairies in the process. How could a single person have so much power? It was the power of his words. In Grimm's stories, the witches were always evil. The humans naturally grew to fear and hate them. They began to hunt them. Didn't the witches fight back? We weren't allowed to use our powers to cause harm. <laughs> but that all changed when the tenant brought them. Bella decided revenge against... Decided revenge was more important than our promise. The witches took over the kingdom. They created the fairy tale curse to spread even more sadness and anger, to fill the human heart with negative emotion. All to fuel the power of the Tenebratum. The delicate balance of harmony between the crystals was broken. The wishes in the Tenebratum grew far stronger than they were ever meant to be. We had no choice but to fight. And then the Great War happened. The Tenebratum battle was, actually, was eventually defeated. The Great War was ended with the help of an unexpected ally, but many lives were lost. Many lives were lost. The good witches suffered horribly. We still have to stay hidden in hopes of having any kind of peace. Are you trying to make me believe that there are good witches? The Tenebratum can poison a heart and mind into the darkness and cruelty. The witches put themselves at risk in working over the Tenebratum and maintaining harmony. Some, inevitably, are corrupted. Many good witches were corrupted during the war. Most remain that way. Many do not believe it, but witches can be just as kind as fairies. And yet it wasn't a fairy that cursed me. I've done good by cursing you, princess. You'll thank me when you've broken it. Delora was not corrupted by the Tenebratum. She's as good as they come. Hopefully you'll come to see that for yourself. I doubt it. Apart from my own inherent goodness, Parfait and I are working together because we have a common goal. Which is, to restore the balance between darkness and light. Three good deeds and I get my life back. Yes, you said than done. You said Cinderella, didn't you? Didn't she just go to a ball and find a prince? What, what does doing good have to do with that? Going to a ball, finding a prince. It's also old-fashioned. No fun in that. Cinder Cinderella is a girl with a pure heart. She's always willing to help others, even when they are cruel to her. Anyway, I have brought some clothes for you. I'll leave them on the table. We'll be waiting outside. There are some people I'd like you to meet. I cannot believe this. I look down at my neatly bandaged feet. I have to admit that while they saw, they are nowhere near as painful as they had been two days before. Here's some salve I made for you. It'll help with the pain. Why would she even care? That was the reason she lost her job at the palace. No, she probably doesn't remember me as the princess. But still, she has no reason to do such things for me. I ignore the salve for the time being and gingerly stand up, testing my feet for pain. The injury is definitely healing. I slowly walk over to the table and change into the clothes that have been left there. The dress is nowhere near as luxurious as the ones that I wear in the palace, but still, it is far improved from my rags. All my life, I've never had to lift a finger. And now... I will not let them see how much they've rattled me. I refuse to break. Just watch me. I will free myself from this curse. What is this place? There are several people in the room chatting amiably with each, with each other. I noticed the girl that had left me the salve by the counter serving drinks. 
but as soon as the people in the room notice me, the room falls into immediate silence. Well, look at what we have here. The Arch Princess herself. Huh? They know who I am. I didn't think it was true. Curse for her cold heartedness. Has to be expected. You remember who I am, yet you still treat me like this. Well, you aren't really princess anymore, are you? You're one of us now, girl. Everyone, please, you shouldn't be treating a newcomer like this. Princess, let me apologize. They mean no offense. I cannot believe that. Not when the people of Parfait is referring to you simply smirk and shrug as I meet their gazes. What is this place? Welcome to March and Tavern, a home for those with the fairy tale curse. You make it sound like some kind of holiday house. Don't ruin my moment, Dolora. Marchen. Tavern? The Marchen was built three years ago, when the number of curse and angel continued to rise. The goal is to gather those affected so they might help each other to break their curse. Of course, I am also here to provide help as necessary. Only the curse and those allied with our cause can stay here. The evil and wicked can never find this place. Most of the people here are cursed. How can those people remember who I am? The curse are not affected by the conditions of someone else's curse. Your condition is simple. Everyone has forgotten you are the crown princess. But because these people here are cursed, they still remember your title. It goes without saying that fairies and witches are also are not affected. Come, princess. Let me introduce you to the few boarders we have at Marchen. Parfait beckons the serving girl over. This is Anis. She helps. This is Anis. Uh, Anis, Anis. I don't know. I'll say Anis. She helps out in the marchen and does most of the cooking. I'm sure you understand why she's working here now. I believe she deserves an apology. Hey, Miss Laura, what are you talking about? Don't you worry your sweet little head over it. You don't remember what this ice person princess did to you. Uh huh. I have nothing to apologize for. Clumsiness does not befit a palace maid. I only did what was necessary. Well, it was nice to meet you, Princess. I managed at Willow. I hope we get along. Um. Really? This is how you're going to start doing good? I don't believe I asked for your opinion. Please, you two, no fighting. I hold my tongue as Parfait leads me to two people whose faces are incredibly familiar. They are faces I've seen in the palace before. This is Julian Valiant and Gurdon Bevrot. How did you know? Both of you were both of you were in the Order of Caldera. That's right. They were two Sir Alcos's best knights. It was a big surprise when they both left a year ago. I only found out recently it was because they acted against Sir Alec Castor's orders. They were stripped of their titles and dishonorably discharged from service. What are you two doing here? Which ones is we help the we help the fairies. And they they and Anna Anis and Annas are exceptions and are allowed in this tavern without the curse. Julian and Garden lend us their strength to help protect the Marchen. Protect from the witches. They do anything to make sure their curses remain broken, remain unbroken. And what about you? I am an exception. Also, I'm good. You keep forgetting about the good part. Remember, not all witches are evil. Your curse is a test. A test. Originally, the wicked were the wicked were cursed so that they could learn to change. Their curses were meant to teach them a lesson. I'm hoping your curse will teach you a lesson too, Ice Princess. I really am only trying to help you. I don't need you to show me how to change. I just want my life back. Well, to do that, you'll have to break your curse. Try and make some friends, Princess. They might be able to help you break your curse. Oh, and I'd love to hang around and watch the Princess try and be friendly. We have work to do, Delora. Fine. Try not to make any more enemies, Princess. The instant Parfait and Delora leave the room, the temperature drops several degrees. Now that I am alone, I feel the cold stares return. Disgust. Contempt. 
as if I am the reason they are all cursed, and as if I am the reason they are cursed and have to take refuge in the margin in the first place. Make friends. All I have ever had are my dolls. I've never needed friends. I would break this curse on my own. I was told it was rude to stare. One man suddenly stands up, the anger apparent on his face. His hands clench and unclench the fists as he glares at me pointedly. Julian and Garland place themselves in front of me, shielding me from the man. You know the rules. What happened in the past what happened in the past stays in the past. And no one is allowed to harm the princess. And no one is allowed to harm anyone else in the Martian. If you cannot comply, you are no longer welcome here. Tsk. Tisk. No matter. The Ice Princess will get what's coming to her. He throws one last glare my way before sitting down again. Break the rules and you'll get what's coming to you. That goes for everyone here. Jorin's tone is cold and firm. There is no doubt that she means what she said. Oh, Jorin is the girl, okay. There's no doubt that she means what she says. So these are the great knights of the Order of Caldera. The margin begins to settle down, and everyone eventually goes back to their conversations and meetings. I walk toward an empty table, realizing that I am being deliberately ignored. I become immersed in my own thoughts as I sit down. One thought, however, comes to me immediately. They hate me. They hate me somehow when I've only ever left the palace twice in my life. How did this happen? The only person who treated me with any respect were Alice, Julian, and Garland. It's because they cannot remember who I am. Maybe being in the Martian was not such a good idea. I doubt anyone here. I doubt anyone here wants to help me break my curse. They'd probably rather see me suffer under its, under its weight. Three good deeds. How am I supposed to complete three when I do not know if I can even accomplish one? Alright guys, I think I'm going to end it off there. I am incredibly exhausted. So, okay, we're going to end it right there. Alright, so we have a place specifically for this. A little bit more going on than meets the eye. So, we have a couple questions here. One, why does everybody hate her? And two, how are you going to get somebody like this to change? You know, like, I, it's going to happen, obviously, but... I'm definitely very interested in not only how they're going to get her to change, but also how the these other like, guys are supposedly going to play a role in this story. Well, that's going to be for this time. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like on it and tell me in the comments section below what you enjoyed about this video or what other games you would like to see me play next. If you enjoyed this series, or if you are interested in any other videos or series on my channel, then I highly recommend that you hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you will be notified whenever a new video comes out. Anyways, that's it from me. See you in the next one. Don't rain.